Hey everybody, and welcome to another learning statistics with Jamovi video. How do I do that in Jamovi? That's what we're talking about today in this video. We're gonna take it up a notch. We are going to drop some Emerald Legacy spices in our designs and analysis. So in this episode, we are going to do a multivariate ANOVA analysis of variance, what we like to call factorial ANOVA, with two, two, so this is a two-way design, a two-way ANOVA, as opposed to the previous videos that went about one-way ANOVAs. So we're going to do a two-way ANOVA, so that means I've got two independent variables, two independent variables. We are going to go through each of these steps and talk about how we do the analysis in Jamovi. Before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that we are using the latest version on Win, uh, excuse me, Mac. I was about to say Windows. No, this is, this is not Windows, as you can plainly see. 2.3.3. Uh, .3. This is the current version for Linux and Chrome OS as well. Windows got a couple of other updates, uh, issues with crashing, that sort of thing. So they did a, uh, a, sneaky, a sneaky little update. Not really all that. Not really all that different from um, the Mac, Linux, and Chrome OS versions, just to make sure that, you know, stuff wasn't happening. That's 2.3.9. I'm assuming the next release, whenever it comes out, is going to be a, um, a joint release uh, update for all platforms that, they, uh, that they, they have. Okay, so let's open up some data. Um, so I already have it open here. This is the RTFM data set from the folks uh, learning statistics with Jamovi. So I have the LSJ hyphen data module slash package installed with my Jamovi. I have to update all of the other ones, and I'm excited to see if there are any new modules since I've last done any kind of module video. But LSJ data, it just installs a number of CSV files from the uh, Foxcroft and Navarro uh, learning statistics with Jamovi textbook. Okay, And so we get all of these. And so this is the RTFM chapter 14 student grades by attendance and reading. So if you might, you might be familiar or if you're not familiar with the RTFM acronym, it is read the flippin manual where flippin is usually replaced with a stronger F word in English, of course, read the flippin manual RTFM RTFM. OK, so what are we looking at here? Well, the data opens with um, four variables. As you can see here, we have variable A, which I don't think was um, named, I guess, on accident. I'm not certain if it wasn't named on purpose or not, but it wasn't named. So uh, what we're going to assume from this is that these are the eight subjects, the eight participants in our study. We have their grade on a test. Let's just call it a statistics test. Looks like out of 100. So we've got um, eight scores. Now we have two of these uh, other variables here. These are our two independent variables. Now, this isn't a, a true experiment, and I'll explain why. Now, it's unlikely that this is a manipulation of students' academic su success. Now, I'm not saying you can't uh, manipulate uh, students in this way, whether or not they get to attend or they read the flippin' manual. Um, but it's unlikely that's the case. So what we are going to engage in is a quasi-experimental. That doesn't change the analysis, though. I just want to be clear that this is still a two-way ANOVA, and we're going to treat it as a factorial ANOVA because we have two independent variables, and each of those variables have two categorical levels. Now, the zero and ones mean something. So let's double click on this and let's actually go through the process of making our variables as clear as possible, shall we? OK, so this is the attend variable. This variable is whether or not the student attended class. So it's not a an integer variable. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's expressed as an integer because it's zero or one, but it's not a continuous or ordinal variable. It is a purely nominal variable. Um, and we're going to leave it as the integer uh, data type. But what we can do here is call this not attend. And then it, it holds the zero and then we'll say attend and then that holds the one. But what it's going to do is it's going to put the not attend and attend in the data spreadsheet. OK, and we can click off of that and that's what it did. So let's work on reading. Now, the reading variable, again, is a nominal variable because we're saying whether or not the student did the reading. And it's going to be an integer because that's our data type. It's a zero or one. These are just placeholder codes. It actually doesn't matter if the zero or one are in here because, again, are the uh, statistical language and package or program, I suppose, um, can do text based variables as long as they're spelled the same. So we don't actually need a zero and one. We can just say not read or read because <laughs> you can say it either way. It still holds the zero because we had the zero in there first and then we'll do read or read. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, you can read that in both ways. If you are not a native English speaker, of course, English is weird with that. But then it puts read or read and not read in the data uh, for us in the data spreadsheet. And we can close this by clicking up, clicking the up arrow there. OK, so let's jump into how to do this ANOVA again. This is a factorial between subjects ANOVA or independent groups, depending on how you what language you're uh, used to. 
So independent groups between subjects for both, because they're the same, for both, we're going to go up to ANOVA and we're going to click on that and we are going to choose oh, from all of these, we are going to choose just ANOVA because it's a two-way ANOVA. So we can't use that. Repeated measures ANOVA. Now we did a video where we did a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, but we don't have any repeated measures or within subject variables. So we don't need that. We could use ANCOVA if we wanted to. This is analysis of covariance, but we don't have a covariant here. So we don't need to do that. And then MANCOVA is multivariate analysis of covariance. You can do a MANOVA or MANCOVA in this one. And so that's why it has the covariates in there. But we don't have more than one DV. So we don't need to use the M bit. So we're just going to go up to ANOVA. We're going to click on that. It's going to open up the module. Now you only get to do one analysis at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab grade and we're going to go ahead and put it in the dependent variable. I know I didn't modify the kind of variable that grade is, but because it's an integer, it ignores this requirement because it's an integer, right? So they're whole numbers. We know they're continuous, uh, but they're continuous whole numbers. We don't really care what's in between them, but we can have values that are in between, like our mean and whatever are going to be decimal values for sure. Then we're going to put our fixed factors in here. The reason why they're called fix is because we have two choices. We have the dichotomous not, the absence of the measurement, or the measurement itself, right? So that's a zero or a one kind of measurement. Those are the two categories. You're either in the not category or you're in the yes category, the no category or the yes category. So those are fixed, okay? And so we are going to put in attend and reading. So I held shift down and I clicked on reading. So it maintains uh, the selection of, uh, of attend. And then we're going to go ahead and put them over there. Now, it already gives you the source table ready and raring to go. We'll come back to the source table here after we've gone through and put in our uh, options. So let's grab our effect size. Now, since we have a two-way ANOVA, I'm going to go ahead and use partial eta squared. Partial eta squared is going to give us the amount of variance that each measure independently or um, special by itself on the DV. So that's the effect of of that one variable on the DV, on grade. So it's going to tell us just that. It's special variance without any other variance in there. Eta, squ eta squared is going to be a different measure. It's going to give total variance shared between all IVs and the DV. So we don't really want to use that in here. So let's go through these collapsible menus. Model, we don't really need to change anything about model. Our sums of squares is type 3, which is the least bias corrected, or no bias corrected. Type 2, type 1 are bias correcting types of sums of squares. I don't suspect, with 8, Students, we could have issues with our assumption checks, but as far as I'm aware, in this canned set of data, I don't think we have any assumption errors, so we don't need to change our sums of squares version. Now, all of the model terms get put over here, so the main effect of attend, the main effect of reading, and then the interaction term of attend and reading are all put in by default, so there's actually nothing we need to change in that menu. Let's go to our assumption checks. Let's get Levine's test of homogeneity. Let's get the Shapiro-Wilk test of um, normality. And we're going to ignore the QQ plot because the normality test does pretty much the same thing. Although if you like visuals better than numbers, then you're more than likely to, you're more than welcome to, to do that. Oh, we do have a homogeneity of variance issue. Ooh, that's bad. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Contrasts. We're not working on any contrasts right now, so we're going to ignore that menu. Post hoc tests. Well, we don't actually need to do any post hoc tests. Um, and the reason is our interaction term is not significant. So we actually don't need to do any simple effects. So we're going to ignore that. Let's get our marginal means, though. Let's get our marginal means for the main effect of attend. And then we're going to add a new term. We're going to reading uh, main effect. That's term two. And then we're going to add term three, which is the, both of them. I held shift down and clicked on attend. And then I clicked the button over. And what it's going to do is give me a uh, interaction graph plot for that. By default, the plots are selected. But let's go ahead and get the actual data table. And then let's change our error bars to standard errors because that's I just enjoy that a little bit more. It makes looking at these kinds of point estimate graphs a lot easier to just quickly look at it and be like, oh, yeah, no, that's significant or possibly significant. That's not. There's too much overlap in those error bars. Under the save menu, you can add residuals to I'll check this just to show you what it looks like. But what it does is it adds residuals to your uh, data list, right? So now we have residuals 1.5, negative 1.5, 2, negative 2.5, all of this. So these are the deviations from the mean. OK, let's go back to analysis, I think. We got everything we wanted here. Let's talk about the output. OK, assumption checks. Normality test, Shapiro-Wilk, we're good. OK, homogeneity of variance. Well, with eight students and pretty much only like two per group, <laughs> so to speak, I think that's what it ends up being, two per group, something like that. Um, yeah, we're going to have some issues with homogeneity of variance. It's just a not. We're going to ignore this just because of this canned example uh, and leaving like two people per group. But there you go. That's um, you, you do have to look out for this. This is this is really bad. This is massive violation. So we would want to change our sums of squares or move to a Wilcoxon uh, or hmm, 
I actually don't remember the non-parametric alternative for uh, a two-way ANOVA. Drop that in the comments below if you are familiar with that one. It's been a while since I've talked about it. Okay, so let's take a look at our source table here. We have the main effect for attend on its row. We have the main effect for reading on its own row. And then we have the uh, interaction uh, marked by this very large asterisk. Attend by reading. That's how you read the asterisks. And then residuals is our error. Okay, so we have our sums of squares for each of these. We have our degrees of freedom for each of these. And as you can see, our main uh, tests, our numerators, all have a degrees of freedom of one. That's because we only have two levels of each of them. Okay, and we get uh, we divide these sums of squares by these uh, residuals or the degrees of freedom, excuse me, and we get our mean squares. Okay, and then we divide our mean square by the error term and we get our F. Okay, so for the main effect of attend, we have an F of 18. That's definitely going to be a significant value. And of course it is. P is 0.013 and we have a massive effect size. Uh, partial eta squared conventions are like 0 0.01, 0 0.08, 0 0.14, something like that. Like these are these are supposed to be small values. Uh, this is a massive, massive um, shared variance here of a attending class and getting a better grade, right? That, that's how attending class works here. And we'll verify that. Of course, this is just my own sort of bias as a, as a professor. Attending class is going to yield better grades. Uh, same thing goes for reading. Doing the reading seems to be, and then we'll look to see if that's the case uh, on our, at our marginal means. So we have a massive F of 44. The funny thing is because our degrees of freedom are so low, this is only a p-value of 0 0.003. So it's not even like an infinitesimally small p-value with an F of 44. Now, if you had a really good sample size, an F of 44, this p-value is like, super tiny and our effect size partial eta squared is almost one which is like ridiculously massive now our interaction is not significant an f of 0.225 uh anything below one any any f value below one is unlikely to be significant um and our p value shows that as 0.66 and our partial eta squared though pretty pretty big pretty medium size effect medium sorry i shouldn't say big medium size effect because i think it's actually it's a 0 0.06 0 0.01 0 0.06 0 0.14 which doesn't really line up but oh well 0.05 that's close to 0.06, so it's like a weak to medium effect size. Now, imagine if we had a greater sample size, this interaction might actually be significant, Where, which is to say that you should probably attend class and do the reading, and I'm sure our marginal means are going to show that. Okay, so let's look at our marginal means. The main effect of attend. Yes, better scores were achieved by attending rather than not attending, and this is about a 20-point difference here. Reading. Yes, as I said, it's better to have read the flippin' manual than it uh, is not to have read the flippin' manual. And again, we have almost a 30-point difference. So it's actually seemingly better to read the flippin' manual than it is even to attend the class. But if we take a look at this interaction, now these lines look parallel, and that usually means no interaction. But again, our sample size is only 8. Now, if you can imagine this blue line here representing um, not attending, okay, and the attending versus reading here, you can likely see that like reading and attend and, and even not attending is going to match up better. So reading and attending the highest, reading but not attending still pretty high. I don't know, maybe this interaction might be useful. Might be useful. It doesn't necessarily mean much. It just means your highest score is best achieved. Best achieved if you read the flipping manual and you also attend the class where the manual is flipping discussed. So that's, and so that is the output of the ANOVA. That's how you do ANOVA, a factorial between subjects ANOVA in Jamovi. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave those down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.